Hello, everyone, and welcome to another executive interview at Edison. I'm Jyoti Prakash, healthcare analyst at the Edison Group. We are joined today by Yepa of Lesson and Dr. Thomas Yunasen, CEO and CSO of Synact Pharma, a clinical stage biotech developing first-in-class therapies for inflammation across both chronic and acute settings. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Yepa, Thomas, you both have extensive experience in life sciences. For those less familiar, could you briefly introduce yourself and tell us what drew you to Synact? Yeah, yeah, very well, is my name, and uh, I'm the CEO of the company. Uh, we actually started out uh, way back uh, in 2000, where we did our first uh, biotech company together. The company was uh, called Action Pharma, uh, and we uh, managed to uh, sell the lead asset to Epi back in 2013. And then uh, we got the idea basically the day after to do another company, and that uh, became Sunat Pharma. Uh, Sunat uh, basically hit it off uh, where we did a lot of the preclinical work, uh, and then we managed to do a public listing of the company on a small stock exchange in Sweden in 2016, uh, and then had a relatively good journey on the stock market, being a public listed company. Uh, did an uplist to Nasdaq main market in uh, 2022. And uh, yes, a nice journey. Uh, so we have been together for more than 25 years, know each other quite well. Yeah, my name is Thomas Jonas. I'm a medical doctor uh, educated from the University of Copenhagen. I'm also an uh, associate professor in cardiovascular uh, uh, pharmacology at the University of Copenhagen and visiting professor in immune pharmacology at uh, William Harbin Research Institute in London uh, Institute under uh, next to, to Bars, the London School of Medicine. Um, the uh, the, the uh, Action Pharma was a company that that Eva referred to was a company that we set up together with some of my uh, a lot of scientific colleagues and uh, with some success uh, took a compound all the way from the design of the molecule to phase Two studies where after we sold it to to Adley. and you could say that 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 Sunak Farm is pretty much the, uh, a similar way of addressing uh, the, uh, the development of of compounds that we uh, are very focused on a compound called Rasamilagon or uh, also in the literature called AP eleven eighty nine that we have uh, taken all the way from design of the molecule and now we are in, in clinical phase two. Uh, and I'm in CSO and, and, and have been running uh, the development programs in, in these five uh, companies and, and, and additional uh, other uh, companies that we have set up during the years. Your lead candidate, Reza Melagon, is targeting inflammation with a unique mechanism of action. Can you tell us a bit more about this compound and how does it work? Resumetadon is a novel way of addressing inflammatory diseases by treating the compound because the compound, compared to most other compounds you address to inflammatory diseases or autoimmune diseases, uh, I think you, you could say that all compounds today that are used in the clinic, uh, there is a risk to induce uh, immune suppression simply by reducing the inflammatory system to a, a level where there is increased risk of, a, of infections. Uh, the way we address this is we would call a novel way of doing it, a new uh, approach for inflammatory diseases that we call resolution therapy. And that means that we, instead of suppressing the immune system or trying to block specific pathway, we rather uh, aim to have a new set point in the inflammatory response and thereby uh, reduce the risk for this, uh, for the uh, for the immune suppression and thereby infections. But at the same time, it benefits from the uh, from the body's uh, ability to handle inflammation. Reza Malagon is targeting rheumatoid arthritis as a lead program and is currently being evaluated in a phase 2B study, ADVANCE. Where's the unmet need in this space and how is ADVANCE designed to address this? I think the answer to that is that I, I, I always touched it here in, in, in the previous answer. That, that most compounds today reduce the inflammatory uh, system to a level where there is uh, uh, associated with a side effect profile, uh, with an unwanted side effect profile. 
So our compound from mode of action where it modulates an ongoing active inflammation, uh, especially uh, in early stage of inflammations uh, or in exacerbations of existing uh, inflammation means that we in rheumatoid arthritis can go in as first line, meaning that we very early in the disease development can come in with a compound that's well tolerated and thereby make a difference for the patients. Uh, reducing the need for glucose quits, which are a major problem in daily clinic, as they are associated with a lot of side effects. And also potentially, you could say, delay the need for uh, the more advanced and expensive signal light treatments. That, well, that's the goal that, or, or the track we are following right now in the ongoing advanced study, which is phase 2B studies. And the other part of it is that you could say that every time you have an exacerbation in your existing disease, um, with a, a sharp increase in symptoms that is driven by uh, activation of the immune system, our compound would fit into that. So you could say first line very early and then flares. And then in 10 years' time, I believe, you have a further understanding of rheumatoid arthritis that would most likely try to treat it even earlier. And there, we know before we have assistance that some of these inflammatory cells that we are specifically targeting is activated. So there is possibility to even apply a brand new approach for the disease, but that would be for the future. We have discussed Rizumilagon and your work in rheumatoid arthritis, but Synact is far from a single program story. What else are you working on? I think what would be fair to say is that we uh, that we have decided to make a dual uh, development program uh, from 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 this approach of resolution. Uh, therapy it fits into into autoimmune inflammatory diseases where you could say that our front runner program is movement arthritis, but it also fits very very well into what we saw under the uh, pandemic, that virus are associated virus infections are associated with the induction of a hyperinflammatory uh, condition in the body that was what was so devastating uh, with uh, with COVID nineteen. We have shown in patients that our compound has the ability to modulate this hyperinflammatory state and get patients faster out of hospital. And we are now following that path, you could say, in other viral infections. We are working uh, together with uh, with sites in, in, in third world countries to, to address dengue, which is a major problem in, in for example, in Brazil. Uh, it's a it's a virus that uh, you a so so called I ARPA virus that you get it by infections uh, by injections from 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 mosquito, uh, but also and very importantly, if it that respiratory infections that lead patients to go to the hospital, that is not over with COVID. We have more than half a million cases in US every year that is hospitalized with influenza, and many of them would probably benefits for a compound that could modulate the hyperinflammatory response that is associated with that and gives prolonged, uh, prolonged disease and increased risk for more, uh, more uh, complicated disease. So that is uh, our second uh, part that we are following in parallel with the, uh, with the rheumatoid arthritis. Talking about the company's operating performance, you recently presented your second quarter 2025 results. Can you touch on some of the key takeaways from the results? Yeah, we have experienced strong support from uh, from our retail investors uh, during uh, during the year, and that has enabled us to conclude a couple of financing rounds uh, without applying the usual discount that you see in the market right now. And uh, we are very happy about that. We are, we are very pleased that uh, we have managed to do so, and that has uh, put us into a situation where we are, you know well financed uh, into uh, into 2027 uh, and uh, we are quite happy about that uh, that situation uh, we have also seen a nice uh, share price development uh, and also an increased uh, liquidity uh, in uh, in the share thanks to uh, strong uh, strong support from our 16000 shareholders uh, in addition to this we are also exploring different kind of uh, soft money options uh, and of course, the dual strategy that uh, John just mentioned, including dengue and infectious diseases, uh, fits that, uh, that that strategy quite well. So we hope that we will be able to see uh, some success uh, on the soft money uh, side during uh, during the next twelve months. 
So that is sort of the, the, the key takeaway from, uh, from the Cube around it. To wrap up, what are some of the key catalysts that investors should watch out for in the next 12 to 18 months from Synact? Well, there's sort of three or four areas, which is sort of the main focus of, uh, of Synact for the next uh, 12 to 18 months going forward. <clears throat> the first one is, of course, to uh, make sure that we uh, meet the deadlines uh, on, uh, on our RA study. Uh, we are, as, uh, as mentioned in, in phase 2B, we expect that we'll be able to rec uh, complete the recruitment in, uh, in Q4 uh, and then enable us uh, to come out with data, top line data in, uh, in Q1 next year. Uh, so that is, uh, that is, of course, our main task uh, right now and uh, where, the, where a lot of the focus goes on. Uh, then the dual strategy uh, of getting projects up and running in, uh, in dengue. Uh, infectious diseases and, and the viral infections as well uh, is another important part. Uh, we expect that uh, we will get the studies up and running within not long, uh, and that will enable us to produce data during 26 and hopefully uh, be able to publish those as well. Um, another track that is sort of very important for us is to uh, make sure that uh, we are in the limelight of uh, business development. We have spent a lot of effort into to that area and uh, just recently uh, strengthened the team with, uh, with the recruitment of our new CBO, MSP um, Aragorn. Uh, and uh, it's, it, it's nice for us as a small company to see that there is a strong traction, a uh, strong interest from both Big Pharma uh, and from, from Big Biotech. So we feel very comfortable that uh, there's a good interest for what we do. Uh, and obviously, uh, to see if we can explore the opportunity for doing a deal uh, during 26 is, is a high priority for us. Yep. Thomas, thank you for talking to us today. Exciting times ahead for Synact. For audience keen to learn more about Synact, please refer to the company website and keep an eye on edisongroup.com for our upcoming initiation report on the company. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.